and here we are. Okay, good morning, everyone. Um, so the um, the plan for today's lecture is to uh, um, discuss the mathematical setting of Markov decision processes that we introduced uh, yesterday, and to uh, uh, walk our steps towards writing down optimality equations in uh, one of the settings that I described yesterday, which is the finite horizon setting. Okay, so the <clears throat> the the mathematical procedures are slightly different in two cases, so it's useful to uh, keep them uh, into two different uh, boxes. So uh, for today, we will be discussing just the uh, uh, finite horizon case. So let's start by uh, uh, summarizing uh, a little bit the um, uh, the fundamentals of Markov decision processes that I introduced yesterday. Uh, so let me recall you what are the ingredients. Uh, so we uh, uh, we are discussing. Um, this should be auto uh, we are discussing a situation in which we have uh, discrete states belonging to some state space. So these are the states. And there are actions which can be uh, operated from any one of these states. Uh, then there are rewards, which are real numbers. Uh, they can, you can make additional assumptions as to these rewards being bounded or having some certain uh, probability distribution, which has finite moments. Okay, so these are. Uh, Technical requests. Uh, we are not interested in a sort of uh, oddities uh, about the structure of the rewards. So uh, we will always implicitly assume that they behave as nicely as required. Okay. Uh, in most cases, you can think of them as being bounded between a certain minimal reward and maximum reward. Uh, so these are the rewards. Okay. And the structure is inherently uh, Markovian in the sense that there exists. Uh, a probability distribution uh, for new states and uh, observed rewards given the previous state and the previous action. Okay, so this is a, a transition probability. What does it mean that it is a transition probability? Uh, it means that uh, uh, all these p's are larger than zero, and then uh, if we sum over all s prime and integrate over all dr, our p of s prime are given as a, uh, this is equal to one for every state action pair. Okay, so it's always uh, uh, properly normalized. And like I said, you can also make additional assumptions about how well it behaves. Okay, uh, so this is uh, uh, what is uh, usually called the model of the environment. And then we have a, a policy. Okay, so uh, this policy is a, a family of probability distributions. And uh, uh, in the following, uh, we will consider actually a, a generalization of this in the sense that the family will be possibly time dependent. Okay. So at each time step of our process, so I remember that times are discrete. So you have a time zero, time one, time two, etc. And at every time step of this process, uh, there is a probability distribution which maps states into actions. Which means that uh, uh, these pies are probabilities themselves. So each of these pi is positive and then summing over all uh, A's overall possible actions is always normalizes to one. Okay. This is the, in general, the policy. In this case is a time dependent strategy of decision making. <clears throat> so uh, uh, there are two ways of uh, uh, representing graphically a mark of decision process. One is a, in terms of a, a time directed graph. Okay, so uh, suppose we start from state uh, S0, then uh, using policy pi0, we can extract one random action according to that probability distribution, which gives us my action A0. 
then according to this probability distribution p above here these two together generate a new state s prime okay and in the process they also produce a reward r let's say r sorry this i push write down as one here because it's a time one and let's call this uh, first reward that is obtained we can call it r1 okay <coughs> and these two arrows are given by the probability transition p is it clear to you what i'm what i'm writing down here graphically okay it's the way that you actually would produce such a process so if you were given these two ingredients the policy and the transition probability then you would be able to generate a sequence of states and actions and new states and rewards okay by this method and then you repeat by one and then you get an action a1 and these two together give a new state s2 and in the process you get a reward r2 and so on and so forth until some final time in which you reach uh, a state uh, st you get the word r capital t this was given by operating the action a t minus one and then everything here ends okay so capital t here for today will be the horizon the time horizon and this is the end of the world okay so you start at time zero at time t everything finishes so everything that could possibly happen later on is something that doesn't give any reward doesn't give any new state and any new dynamics so you can sort of uh, consider only everything that happens up to that time horizon capital t okay so which means that if our small t's goes from go from one to to capital t okay <coughs> uh, like i said yesterday the control the handle that you have on such a system is uh, through the uh, policy just this object here and this is the controllable part where on the other hand this part here is not controllable so there's no way the agent can move its handles uh, in order to uh, modify this transition probability p the only thing we can do is select properly select the actions to take at every time step in order to uh, obtain a result okay so uh, like i said earlier uh, there is just there are two different ways uh, of describing this process so this was in time but there's also another graphical description uh, uh, which goes like this so in the form of a usual graph so you, you have several states, so I should not call them as sub one because this is confusing because it mixes up with the index of time. So, but, but you have several states, okay, which I will call as S, S prime, okay, and maybe another state as second, okay. These are just labels given to states, could be one, two, three, if, okay, whatever. And then from each state you can pick uh, uh, one among many actions okay so these are all actions that are accessible from state s and each of these actions can send yourself either back to state s or to some other state with different probabilities okay so you usually write down this like uh, so this is the this would be written here at the probability of going from s to s given a uh, and this would be the probability of going to a second from sa and this would be the probability of going to s prime uh, professor is there yeah. any chance of uh of staying in the same state is there like a loop that brings it back to yeah the same sure. state? this is this is one instance there are actions that is bringing you back to the same state this is absolutely uh possible okay thank you Okay, so and then of course you can generalize whatever. Okay, <clears throat> and this is a, uh, a graphical description which reminds more uh, of uh, how you would you describe a Markov chain with all the arrows that go from one uh, one state to another. Okay, uh, 
what is left here to 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 define is uh, uh, what is the goal of the optimization right so uh, this is valid for any possible control for any possible policy but we are interested in formulating a problem in which we have an objective and we want to find the best way to decide in order to uh, accomplish that objective and uh, in our case here our objective is uh, uh, the following so suppose uh, 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 yeah let me let me state it so the objective is Uh, to find uh, the arg max, okay, so the, it's the argument of this function over all possible sequence of policies, so over all possible pi zero, pi t minus one, okay, so this is the sequence of policies that you can take at different times, see, pi zero, pi one, the last one that makes sense to consider is pi sub t minus one. You want to find the maximum of what? Of the expected value of the sum from t from zero to uh, say, we said the last reward is capital T and one actually, so, so this is in fact, okay. We can write it like this. Uh, R T plus one. Okay, there are equivalent ways of writing it, of course, uh, if you shift the D indices, but that's okay. <clears throat> okay, so we have to be clear about uh, what we mean here. Uh, so argmax means that this object is, of course, dependent on the policy, among other things, okay, through this expectation value. And these are random stochastic values in principle. So our system uh, accounts for the possibility of this uh, object being, uh, being stochastic. The rewards could be stochastic or could be deterministic. Uh, uh, the system is flexible with respect to this. Of course, also the dynamics could be deterministic, okay? So here, this is very general. These are probability distribution, but this includes the, the sub case, the, the special case when uh, uh, if you do something, if you do an action, you end up in a fixed given state that this is included as well. So the deterministic case is a, uh, 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 is a limiting case of the uh, uh, of the general case, which means that in practice, optimal control theory is a subset of this description. Okay, uh, so let's let's clarify what this uh, expectation value means. Okay, so this expectation value means that we are uh, along this sequence. So we have a, a sequence uh, generated by this process. Okay, which I can write down as a as a stream, state zero, action zero, then we get reward one and state one, and then we have action one, and this gives reward two and S2, and then from state S2, I pick action two, which gives me a reward three and state three, and so on and so forth, until I end up with A capital T minus one, RT, ST. So this is a full history from beginning to end. Uh, what does this expectation mean here? Well, it means that well, we are taking the expectation with respect to, uh, this is a notation which is very much used in, uh, in uh, stochastic processes and in uh, uh, mathematical statistics. So we're, we are gonna pick uh, our action AT from the policy by here, if I define it like this, the action uh, zero is taken from the policy pi zero. So I have to keep the same time index here. This is taken from the policy pi t. We put a dot here and then we say from state s t. Okay, so this means that uh, if I am in state s t at time t, I pick AT from the probability distribution given by pi t. This, this is the formal way to describe this. Uh, and then I pick S t plus one from my P, actually I pick both of them, the pair 
of rewards and new states together i pick it from p dot dot uh, previous state previous action okay and then the only thing that's left to describe is our how i pick the initial s node okay this is the only orphan here this is i have, i have to prescribe some way to to define it at the beginning so finally i have to define s node according to some initial distribution say we call it uh, for instance a raw node or something okay <clears throat> so this describes the way you generate the process you are given an initial distribution raw node you pick up an s then look for your policy at time zero pick up an a zero and so on and so forth okay i'm i'm Deliberately very, very slow and redundant in order to uh, for you to understand what uh, all the uh, uh, implications are here, okay? So when we write this objective function here, uh, again, I'm, I'm gonna rewrite this. This, this is a big object. Uh, let's call this, this uh, objective function for the moment. Let's call it G. Uh, this is, again, I'm repeating the sum from zero to t minus one of the rewards are t plus one. So when we take these expectation values, one thing that we can do at the beginning is first of all, take the uh, averages with respect to the distribution of rewards themselves, okay? Uh, and uh, leaving all the other things as they are, uh, so, which means that we take the average with respect to this first and define uh, another object, which is uh, uh, slightly abusive in notation. So we define uh, the reward for a state action and new state as prime as the expectation value where R is picked according to the distribution of R on specified S prime given S a of r okay which even more explicitly is the integral over r of r p of r s prime s a since in, we are interested in averaging this means that from this point on we are not really very much caring about what is the actual distribution of uh, uh, the r values as long as we are only interested in optimizing averages, okay? Notice that the fact that we can ignore the probability distribution and only focus on average is a distinctive property of the fact that we are working with a known model of the environment. Because when, when we will deal with learning, probability distributions will, very will be very important, okay? So the way that rewards are distributed has a strong influence on learning, because if your rewards are deterministic, then it, you just need one shot to learn what the value, or the mean value is. Uh, but if it's uh, highly noisy, you, are, you will need to average over many uh, things. But since now we know everything, we don't need to sample. And so since we don't need to sample, we don't need to carry over all the information about the probability distribution, as long as our focus is on average values. Like I told you yesterday, there might be different objectives, okay? Maybe you're interested in something which is about risks. So you want to avoid to have very large and very large negative rewards. So there's very punishment. So you don't care about what happens in the average, but you don't wanna get some large punishment. In that case, you would have to modify these things and these objectives will be dependent on the probability distributions. But we don't discuss that here at this stage, okay? So from now on, we can uh, uh, ignore basically this uh, uh, dependence uh, on the uh, 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 on the distribution of rewards, and we can rephrase our goal just as a, a simpler uh, expectation value, or again, we pick our actions according to the policy at time t. And uh, uh, we pick our uh, states according to p, okay? For this one, okay, again, I'm, I'm slightly abusive in the notation, but this object here 
this is just the marginal distribution of P R S prime S A. Okay, so I should give it a, another name, another symbol, but let's not make it too too heavy. So what I mean by this uh, is uh, this is a, in fact P S prime S A is defined as the integral over R of P of R S prime S A. Okay. So I'm still using the same symbol to say that forget about the uh, outcomes of R because what we will be caring about here is just uh, okay, S note is still depending only on the row. This and here we can replace that sum as the sum from t going to zero to capital T minus one of now these averages, average rewards, which depend on s t a t s t plus one. Okay. So this is very heavy as a notation, but uh, in the following, I will just uh, make it uh, much, much leaner. You always have to go back and think about what does it mean to take uh, uh, expected values and what it means in practice, okay? Very good. So like I said, the objective is uh, to, uh, I formulate, yeah, right. So this, this is my G, which depends implicitly on pi, okay? which means it depends on pi zero, pi t minus one. Okay, so uh, we will now slowly set the stage to understand how to solve this problem. Okay, the goal for today is to solve this. What do I mean by solving? Uh, <clears throat> well, solving here means finding an algorithm that for whatever choice of your model, that is for whatever choice of the distribution uh, P, identifies which is the sequence of decisions that have to be made. So you fix an horizon here. You fix some horizon here, you fix this, and then you're asked, what is the best control in red here to achieve this goal? How do I compute it? Okay, that's the goal for today. So, uh, before we go to that, which will require a little bit of uh, uh, calculations, not much, but uh, it's important to go then step uh, to step. It's uh, perhaps good to get our feet again back on the ground and think about one uh, very simple specific uh, uh, example of a Markov decision process, which is a simplified version of the uh, cleaning robot uh, system, uh, which also can be used as a playground to solve uh, this kind of problems that we are interested in. So uh, we take a small break from formalism and introduce uh, an example. Of MDP, uh, which is also uh, discussed in the book by Sutton and Barto and uh, there it's called the recycling robot. Okay, so the uh, the recycling robot uh, uh, is a relatively simple object. <clears throat> it's uh, let's start from uh, uh, from the description of the states and actions that are available to this robot. Okay, so I have to go around here. Okay, very good. So uh, 
The set of states for the recycling robot is very simple. It's made just by two states, okay? And these two states are the levels of the battery, okay? So this, the, the only thing that matters in the relationship of the agent with the environment is whether the agent is, in a, is at a level of charge which is high or low. Nothing else matters around. Okay, so it's a very simple description. The only uh, characterization of the environment is that whether the robot is uh, high on charge or low on charge. And what are the things that the robot can do? Well, the robot can, be, can, be, can do uh, uh, different things, uh, which might in principle depend on, on whether it's uh, uh, in high charge or in low charge. For instance, the state of actions in this example, when it's on high charge, it can do two things. First, it can go around and search for rubbish, okay, or for glass bottles, okay, which is since it's a recycling robot, that's that's a more proper uh, description of what the goal is. So it moves around and searches for uh, uh, for for empty <coughs> plastic bottles, okay, to recycle. Uh, Notice that here we don't have any specific spatial structure. Okay, so this is a very simplified situation where there's no moving around, taking one step in one direction, etc. It's a navigation problem, but in a zero-dimensional space. Okay, the decisions are more about what to do than than where to go. Okay, so it can search or it can wait. What is this wait action? Well, the wait action is that the recycling robot just stays in place. Maybe because it's low on battery, okay? And so it's not a good idea to move around. Uh, but nevertheless, if it stays in place, maybe someone is walking around, just is willing to stand up from, uh, he, from her or his desk and take the plastic bottle and throw it into the recycling robot, okay? So it's a proper action. It's just okay. not moving around, but waiting for someone to fill you in, or as we will see, uh, waiting for someone to take the robot and put it to the recharge station. Yeah. Uh, since this action is for high battery, wouldn't that eliminate the waiting because of low battery? Or will those two overlap in actions when the battery is low? Okay, we, we will see how this problem is constructed. You can have very many variations depending okay. on what is sensible or not. Uh, this is one out of many. I'm following the book so you can uh, look back at the details over there as well. But of course, you can sort of build up your own uh, set of states and uh, actions uh, as uh, as rich as you, as you want. But uh, we, we, I'll just uh, uh, I'll just consider this particular example. There might there might be other more sensible choices. I agree. So when it's low, um, it's very similar in the sense that the kind of things that you do can do when you're low on battery, uh, you can do the same things. But you can also go and recharge. Okay, there's a third uh, available action. So uh, this defines the uh, uh, the states and the actions. Now we, we would have to define the rewards. Okay, uh, which in this particular examples are not stochastic, so we don't care about uh, necessarily about. Uh, like I said earlier, I mean they can be stochastic, but since we only care about the averages, we we would have to come up with a table. Uh, in which uh, for every state action and new state uh, you put a reward etc so but, but we don't go through this uh, uh, lengthy operation of writing down a table of transition probabilities because uh, i mean i can do it but it's going to be a one page of uh, uh, elements you can do it uh, by yourself what i will do i will jump directly to the graphical description of this because it's more compact and it contains exactly all the same information <coughs> okay so the graphical description, like I said, is rather simple. There are two states, high and low on battery. And uh, like I said, if you're high on battery, you can take the action of uh, waiting. Okay. So reasonably, if you wait, uh, you don't consume charge, you don't consume battery. So you keep staying on the same charge uh, state okay 
So the probability with which you go back to high here, this is the probability. This object that I'm writing here one is the probability of being in the high state, given that you were in the high state and you took the action of waiting, okay? But in short, I'm just writing a one. This is this. If you decide to wait, you will still be high. There is no leakage of battery if you wait. Again, this is just one choice. You could have done otherwise, but just to fix the ideas. And then if you do that, you get some reward, R weight. And this is, you can think of it as a, for instance, at every instant of time, this could be a zero or a one, the random reward. Zero if nobody drops a bottle in the, in the recycling robot uh, the basket, uh, or one if one drops a bottle, or 10 if one drops 10 bottles, okay? This R weight is the average number of bottles which are delivered to the robot when it's just sitting and waiting somewhere, okay? If, it, if the robot decides to search, then two things can happen, okay? Here, here there is some energy consumption, which we can model as uh, being two possible outcomes of this search. Maybe the search is uh, relatively short and therefore it gets back to the high level of charge or maybe it's long and consuming and it takes to a low level of charge. Again, the level of charges is a continuum. So here we're making wild approximations, but it's just for the purpose of setting a toy model. And then in this case, you can have an R search. And maybe this uh, reward that you get for the search is higher than the reward that for the weight because you move around and then you can collect more uh, uh, water bottles for uh, people who are too lazy to stand up from their desk uh, and collect them, okay? And this alpha is the probability with which you will still be high on, on charge after a search. And of course, if you are not high on charge, you are low on charge with a complementary probability, uh, but the same uh, reward as before you will get. And then, okay, now we can go quicker. quicker. Uh, we can also have the same kind of actions uh, for the low state. So we can search or we can wait. And again, if you if we wait, certainly we don't get any more battery. So we get the probability one too low, and we get the reward our weight. And if we search again, we have the probability of going too low. Now, since we were low, maybe the probability of being still low is higher, which is another number beta. And then we have our search. And then if we are uh, uh, maybe, maybe how do we go from uh, a low level of battery to a high level of battery? Well, maybe because there are someone uh, who is helpful enough to see that the robot is low on charge and then picks up the robot and carries it to the charging station. Clearly, if this happens, this means that there has been some uh, human intervention. So maybe here for this process, you don't have a positive reward, but you have a, a cost C, okay? So this is something with, where the reward means that uh, if uh, it happens that you sw your robot switches off because it's out of battery, it's not low any longer, but it's really uh, uh, out of, out of, uh, out of out of battery, then someone will have to pick it and this will have a cost. And then finally, we have the last action that we introduced, the recharge one. And this spontaneously means that the robot has decided to go recharge before the battery dies down, okay? So if it decides to recharge, then it will succeed. So probability one, but then this clearly gets 
no reward because on the way to the recharging station, it doesn't, it doesn't care about bottles coming in. Okay, it just does look for bottles. Okay, this, this was explicitly meant to be a simple, very simple toy model. But this is how you, can, you could possibly describe at a very coarse grain level any kind of decision making process. Okay, you can clearly see this is a meant to provide you a blueprint. So if you have a, an actual problem in decision making, your blueprint is to go through the steps, define meaningful states, define meaningful actions from the states, define how from a state taking an action you end up in uh, other states, define with which probabilities you get there and with what kind of distribution of rewards you will get there. Designing the structure of a problem is a key step. Uh, and this is one simple particular example. So uh, in this case, clearly the formulation of the problem is the same. The goal, for instance, is uh, uh, set the horizon to say 100 steps example uh, what the, what are the best policy so what are the probability distributions of actions that maximize the sum of the rewards obtained overall which means that the average number of bottles that you can collect minus the costs that you have incurred in when you were uh, when the robot was uh, was carried over to the charging station by some external uh, operator. Okay. Hope this is clear to you. Very good. <clears throat> so at the end of today's lecture, basically we will have uh, a way to approach this problem operationally and to find out what the actual policy is. I can tell you from the beginning that the uh, algorithm that we will come up with is very simple. Uh, but even in the simple case like this one, the one that I depicted, you cannot solve, you cannot find the optimal solution analytically. Finding analytically optimal solutions in Markov decision problems is a rarity. Okay, so when we will stumble upon a situation where you say the optimal policy is, is something which is unusual. The typical case is that you have a very simple clear cut procedure to solve the problem, which anyway will require some numerical implementation as an algorithm. Okay, so I think it's a good uh, point to stop here before we delve into the actual calculations in a, in a second. Uh, so are there any questions so far? Okay, good. I hope that's because it's uh, clear and not because it's totally obscure, but one never knows. Okay, uh, then we can take uh, a break and uh, we can reconvene at uh, 10 uh, sharp. Okay, see you later. Okay.